Are those magical gloves? Yes, these hands can do magical things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you... <laughs> I am not gonna edit that out. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Francois, your favorite American expat living in Seoul, South Korea. I'm with my buddy, Hans. We have just arrived in Jeju. Why did we decide to come to Jeju? Well, we were offered the opportunity um, by an official JJ organization to come take photos and um, vlog for a bit. So here we are. Don't want to bore you with all the talking. Let's get to the photos. We're going to go now to a place called Dream Tower, which is the largest tower or the largest building, I guess, in Jeju. So now we're here at Dream Tower. This is Jeju's Dream Tower. This is the tallest building in Jeju. So let's go up and see what they have inside. Okay, so this is Sky Deck. Wow. It's an amazing view of Jeju. Well, the city rather. Sheesh. Okay, Sky Deck was pretty cool. We got couple of nice photos. Yeah, I think we've exhausted all of our photo opportunities here in the area. So let's go get something to eat near our Airbnb and then start up again tomorrow morning. Yo, Heinz, what is this? I'll be the gym. No, I'll be Tom. I'll be Tom. Yo. Yo, this is super good. This is Kalbi Tong. All right, this is one of the famous, most famous restaurants to get this Kalbi Tong here in Jeju. So, it looks like this. I want to eat it. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Wish you were here, able to eat it too. But since you're not, you can live vicariously through my experience. Let's get it. No. Nothing at all left. It was a little windy out here, but it's, uh, it's Saturday morning and we're out and we're watching the sunrise.
woke up this morning. We went outside uh, to take some photos of the sunrise. Let me show you how the area looks. You can see photographers out there now uh, taking photos. So right over here. And this whole area uh, has a perfect sunset. This is probably, ah, oh, you can't really see. Let me see if I can move over to this window. Ah. Anyways, trust me, uh, I'll post the photos and you can see how this area is the perfect spot for uh, taking photos here in Jeju. Heinz, what yeah. time were you like actually up? I woke up a few times, uh, but it was still dark. Hmm. Uh, kept dozing off, but then woke up around like 6.15, hmm. 6.30, and I opened the shade and I was like, oh, we gotta go, <laughs> we gotta go, so. <laughs> And now we're here at, uh, I think this is Woljangri. Uh, let me take a look. Yeah, Woljangri. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Area. So this is a beach area. Uh, wow, the waves are so heavy today. And there's windmills and all kinds of things around here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to eat. We're going to viddle up and then get out and take some amazing shots of this area. Oh, that's a hot shot of him just walking on the beach. Yeah. Uh... Oh, yeah, it's so cold outside. Like, it's so cold and super windy. So we decided to come into this, I guess, cafe burger fish and chips place and like have something to eat and you know plan out the rest of our day here okay the food finally came out and i've been eating already <laughs> while heinz is taking a billion gajillion photos of this plate so i got a classic cheeseburger with fries and heinz got fish and, uh, fish and chips so yeah we're gonna take a break here and refuel then we'll get back on the road. We just finished lunch, brunch slash lunch or whatever. Uh, so we're gonna go now to Sogipo and it's super windy out here. They got really, really cold. Like, oh my goodness. Uh, if you come to Jeju <laughs> in the mid fall, November, early November, mid November, make sure you dress warmly because I was not expecting this. The bottom is right. now or never. Is it all? Oh, we just friends. Yeah, don't put that on the camera. <laughs> My heart, but I don't show it, show it. We stopped at this place near Sogipo and I don't know if this place is private property or not but the view is absolutely spectacular. in Sogipo and we're in the Daipo beach area and we're at one of the resorts near near the ocean and it's freezing out here it's so cold oh my goodness over here this is where usually there are a lot of older Korean 
women, maybe like in their 50s or 60s. And what they do is they go uh, diving for shells, clams, and other uh, crustaceans for people to eat. They're pretty famous in this area and around Korea. Okay, well, Hans is over there taking photos and I'm being cold. Uh, just want to come over here and talk to you guys and just check in, check in with you and just tell you about Jeju and why it's a pretty special place for you to visit in Korea. So as I mentioned earlier, this is an autonomous region. So Jeju has its own culture. It's pretty laid back here. It's much more laid back, I find, than the mainland. However, Jeju is very big. It's super spread out. So uh, it takes you a long time to get anywhere here. So if you want to get anywhere uh, in Jeju, you definitely need to have a car. All right, so what I was saying is that Seoul has a lot of people, but there aren't so many people uh, here in Jeju. So you can go drive around many areas and you'll always have like free time to walk around. Not just free time to walk around, but you can walk and not be encumbered by people bumping into you and uh, just getting in your way or you getting in someone else's way, uh, whichever way you want to look at that. And of course, Jeju has a lot of palm trees. This is a tropical island. Okay, finally, we came to another beach here at Depot. And this beach is supposed to be, well, not a beach rather, it's supposed to be a, a cliff face. And this should be like the most scenic and most picturesque cliff face <laughs> in all of Jeju. <laughs> yeah, cut, redo. <laughs> it's what I heard. So let's, uh, <laughs> Let's hope the, uh, the rumors are true. Lions found the perfect place to shoot. But that's a hot shot right there. You guys can see there's a ship, a yacht actually coming from behind the rock. I think that's the same yacht that we saw on the other side. It says Shangri-La 5. Hines, are you gonna get some shots? Oh, he's already working, already working. Oh shoot, Hines, you're leaving tomorrow, right? Yes. Oh crap, I gotta take Hines to the airport super early in the morning. I am not looking forward to that, sheesh. So I'm leaving tomorrow at 8. You should have just stayed on the same flight. That's true, I should have. Um, I'm going, yeah, I should have. Why didn't I just go home in the morning? I think because I thought I could get like more like photos and stuff and have like more vlogging time, but it's actually cold and I want to go home. I miss Seoul. <laughs> hey, Heinz, can you give us like a quick recap of your trip so far? Like what were some of your most memorable moments? The one spot that I really like, I can't even see myself. The one spot I really like is uh, this morning. We woke up at like 6.30. Ah, yeah. Right. Mm. Oh, it's very beautiful. Went outside and it wasn't just us. It was a whole bunch of other photographers as well, too. So I really enjoyed that. I was surprised. Like everyone there had like special, you know, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. I saw a Sony guy. He had yeah, an yeah, yeah, A7R4. Yeah. A lot of professionals out there. Mm. So yeah, that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that moment. Actually, I didn't want to wake up. I was like, yo, Heinz came to wake me up. He was like, yo, let's go. And I was like, ah, tomorrow. tomorrow. But I'm happy that I actually got up and went I was outside. Up for like 15 minutes and I saw this guy walking. <laughs> I was like, all right, all right, all right. Oh, were you out for 15 minutes before me? Oh, like 30. If I can zoom in a bit, you can see right over there, they're taking wedding shots. And then over here, you can see the amazing sunset. Wow, so a guy let me take a photo of him. He was really nice. So yeah, Jeju is like kind of got country vibes. So people here are not uh, camera shy or I don't think people here are as camera shy as they are in Seoul. If you ask people to take photos in Seoul, they're like, no, 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 no. They'll shug and they'll walk away. They'll kind of do like a little Harlem shake and they carry on about their business. <laughs> Ain't that right, Hines? 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, Heinz doesn't listen to anything that I say. Like, whenever I try to make like witty jokes, Heinz is like, mm, yeah, sure, whatever. Anyways. All right, we're here at Dojubong, and this is the place where my friend Bao. Hi. So I left Heinz at the airport. <laughs> Heinz is a Hmong American. Bao is also Hmong American, so I traded in one Hmong for another. Bao lives here on Jeju and she is one of the I guess you could say tourist experts of the entire island because she's been here for so long. How long have you been here in Jeju? I've been here for three years. Three years is quite a long time. Are you enjoying your stay here? Yes, I love Jeju. I actually don't want to leave Jeju. Here is the question that's going to set off this vlog. Bao, yes. do you love me? I guess no, not. I don't. I don't love him at all. Val doesn't he's, love him. I don't love him. He's not a very good friend. I'm looking for the special place where we can take photos of airplanes taking off from Jeju Airport. So Just this, place. this is this place. Okay, this place. we're gonna walk up the mountain and check it out and see if we can get those shots. An airplane landing right there. Let's see if I can get that shot. Oh, I can't even see it. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> and you guys can probably see it better than I can. Okay guys, so funny story. I don't know if you can see, but there's two kind of uh, horse-shaped lighthouses over there. But Bao and I went over there um, was it two years ago? Last year. Last year, during the typhoon. I'll look for the footage and try to put some B-roll, but it was crazy. I don't recommend for anyone to try to take photos in a typhoon unless you have a death wish. Wait, so we're on to the next spot. We're going to, uh, where are we going? To a market? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna go to a market. Okay, so just like in Seoul, Jeju has like, bicycles and scooters that you can rent. And here, this is a cacao bicycle. So, I think you would need to have the cacao application, cacao top application, in order to uh, rent these bicycles. But it's super easy. Yo, Bao is learning the camera. She's gonna be a videographer in no time. No, I won't. <laughs> All right, guys. So we have come to Guan Um Sa. This uh, temple is not too far from the center of Jeju city, but I think you need a car in order to come here because it took us about 30 minutes, 35 minutes to drive here. On the bus, it might take, you know, an hour and 15 minutes or something. But yeah, so this is one of the most uh, known and the most uh, visited temples here in Jeju city. Uh, so we're gonna walk around and just look at the autumn foliage that is still here and we've got some large uh, trees here i forgot the name of these trees do you remember Bell? no aren't they just evergreen trees okay maybe they're just evergreen trees i'll find out and i'll put the description in the box okay guys so we just arrived here at a place called the hall of our hats and this area we were told by one of the monks is newly built, only about 40 or 50 years old. This area is where the enlightened ones, the monks who have been very devout and have studied uh, their craft, they are searching for Nirvana. So they come here to pray and meditate and to have more contact with the earth and the nature around them. So usually, these areas are off limits to the public, but uh, today we are allowed to go up and take photos and to also pay our respects to those who have passed, to the ancestors. So let's go up, let's get the photos, and let's also be very respectful of this holy place. Okay guys, so we're here now at Dongmun Shijong. This is Dongmun Market, and in this market we can find a lot of traditional foods from Jeju. So foods that are only uh, for this island, indigenous to this island. So Bao told me that here we can also find souvenirs and some really nice treats 
from the pojang machas or the street vendors which we normally can't find in the mainland of korea so let's go inside and take a look and also get a couple of nice photos uh, to add to our collection of our jeju trip So I heard these are special gems and this gem here is made from red wine. Mm -hmm. So, oh, it's red kiwi wine jam. Interesting. All right, so we're gonna take a bite. Okay, that one is pretty good. Hey guys, so we decided to stop here and get some fried chicken from this famous place in this mart. I heard our oh, this. Dong uh, So here, this is the chicken that we've got. It's some garlic chicken. Looks really, really good. Bao's already eating. Yeah. She didn't even wait for me. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. Why didn't you wait for me? Well, if you would stop vlogging, then yeah, you can get your chicken. No, Yo, this is my job though. Okay, you, then do your job and let me eat. If you were a real friend, you would wait for me. Okay, so in Korea, when we're eating fried chicken or chicken with sauce, we always have these gloves, these plastic gloves that we put on. Damn, Bao, slow down. You need to slow down, I'm eating. I like messing with her. And I love white meat. White meat is the best part of the chicken. So this has some, what is this, almond or? That's garlic. This is all garlic? Garlic. Oh, snap, okay. Well, it's all garlic, so. This is heavenly. Mm -hmm. So the thing I like about Korean fried chicken is that the outside is not so hard and crispy. It's mm -hmm. a little soft, right? Mm -hmm. But the inside is like super juicy. Mm -hmm. It's nice and mm. juicy. I think it's freshly fried. The Jeju, you always have to get Jeju orange juice. Um, this is Hala Bong. I guess this is one of like the really good brands. Anyways, I think all of the brands are good, but I ate a lot of chicken and the carbs are like starting to get to me. So I need this to like wake me up because I'm super tired. Mm. It's so sweet. But, mm. Okay, Bao said this is the hold up, best hold up, hold up. Hold up place in the market so ah, it's a thousand one is a thousand can you get some more money okay that's your phone Where's oh your it's wallet? here this one. <laughs> you could have so many pockets phone. right tell me there's not another chum one no No, there's not another chun one. Oh. Okay. You want me to eat it? Hot. Well, I can't believe you're going to eat it. No, it's too hot. Oh, Guys, so we left the market and now we are at this place called Q. Hyanggi. And this is an orchard, so we're going to go inside and pick some Jeju oranges or tangerines. Um, I heard that we can pick up to one uh, kilogram of tangerines and take with us. However, while we are inside, we can eat as many as we want, which is crazy. The price of admission is 5,001 per person, which is like $5. So we're gonna go inside we're gonna eat as much as possible and we're gonna take as much as possible with us. So let's go. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're here in the orange grove or tangerine grove. We found out exactly where we need to go in order to pick the sweetest tangerines as you saw uh, the assistant or the worker do. So first what we have to do is actually, we need to put on these gloves. So if you look here, Bao is putting on her gloves. 
Ta-da-da! I'm gonna leave it exactly as it is. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm sorry. That's just your mind was in the gutter when I said that. <laughs> My mind was not in the gutter. I yes, I asked you a simple question. <laughs> and I answered it. You you answered. You went all. That's when I realized. Oh crap! Your mind is in the gutter. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just saying. Like, uh, okay. I don't know how your boyfriend is gonna respond to that. These but. hands can do many things with this cutter. <laughs> oh, okay, so anyway. Okay, we've got uh, a bunch of trees to choose from. There's not much on them. <laughs> They're doing gangsta style. I'm gonna cut the whole tree. This one's now transformed into a farmer. This is like my lifelong goal. This is my dream, so. I haven't shared this dream with uh, any people uh, on YouTube, but most of my close friends know that I want to be a farmer. So as soon as I'm able to uh, save up enough money and yeah, buy land, then I'm going to farm because I think that form of lifestyle is much more sustainable than going to a nine to five every day or not even that. Even if you enjoy your job, like it's something, something special about growing your own food and not having to worry about receiving a paycheck in order to take care of yourself. So, you know, what happens if, what happens if you wake up and none of the grocery stores have any food? People said, well, well not people, but a lot of my students, because I asked them this question, a lot of my students say, well, we'll just go to a restaurant. And I'm like, okay, well, what happens if the restaurant doesn't have any food? Then what do you do? They say, we go to our grandparents' home. Well, what if your grandparents don't have any food? Then there is a, a look of, of bewilderment on their faces. And I say, exactly. So, you know, owning your own farm or having your own land, even if it's like just a patch uh, that you do you know, small farming on, like you're growing tomatoes or potatoes or onions, it's uh, very satisfactory and very, uh, it's very uh, fulfilling, I should say, to, to just look at something that you planted in the ground and it grew up to something that you're able to use to nourish yourself. <laughs> So good. Mm. Like eating it right from the tree. Wow. Uh-huh. Damn, that's pretty good. It's very good. Okay, we got a really nice haul. Like look at Belle, all those tangerines she has. Full bucket. So we're probably gonna find a nice place around here to sit down and eat some. So this is the grove. Maybe I can zoom in a bit for you. There you go. So it's pretty big. And this place is actually in the city. So we're still in Jeju city. <laughs> oh, the lighting here is great. So let's, um, let's eat some tangerines and let you watch and let you be jealous of us eating. Yeah, I think that's the only way that, uh, that we can go about doing it now. <laughs> Okay, so we've had an amazing time here at the Orange Orchard, Orchard, I mean the Orange Grove or the Tangerine Grove, however you want to say. And now we're going to head off and uh, Bao, is it time for you to leave? Yeah, I will be leaving. Bao has to go, so I need to drop her off at a bus, bus station, terminal. Mm -hmm. uh, bus terminal. And when I drop Bao, ugh, when I drop off Bao, 
at the bus terminal. You're gonna drop then me. I'll head to the airport and I'll return my car and wait a while before the plane takes off or no, I'll actually we're not done. At the end of the tangerine or orange picking uh, tour, they're providing us with some orange jam with crackers that we can eat mm -hmm. for free. And also there's some, um, what is this? Green tangerine juice. Green tangerine juice, all for free, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can have as much as we want. Mm -hmm. And there's hot water and mm -hmm. there's some other things here. Yo, drink. this is a really good experience for 5,001. I highly recommend coming here. What about you, Bao? Recommend? Yeah, I like this place. Hey guys, Jeju trip is over. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the photos and I really appreciate you supporting me in all that I do. So like, comment, subscribe if you want. Um, anyways, just let me know how you felt about the video and if Jeju is a place that you would want to visit if you come to Korea. Okay guys, I'm heading back to Seoul. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Love you guys. Peace.